And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Nemesis from Awakened Realms. Now, this is a big, giant game. This is essentially Aliens the board game, or Alien the board game, whichever one you so desire. It doesn't say that, but when you see the models and the figures and you're going through, you, you, that's what it is. You are a group of people on a ship that seems to be falling apart, and also there's aliens on board. You are working together to get the ship back to Earth without the aliens causing problems, and you jettisoning there, getting there in survival, being in stasis, um, and accomplishing personal goals at the same time. This can be played as a straight co-op, it can be played as a semi-co-op, that's kind of the base game thing, and that is where I got concerned when I heard about this. See, I think Awakened Realms is an amazing company. I think some their stuff is some of the best in the market. When I opened this game, I was mind blown with how awesome the components were for Nemesis. But this semi-cooperative thing just doesn't work for me in games. Because everyone's working together, but you're not sure, but maybe you are, or maybe you're not. And sometimes it comes close, Dead of Winter came close. I wasn't sure how to feel about Nemesis, especially after my first play, so that's why the review didn't happen after the first play, it happened after several. Let's take a look at the game. Okay, please do not use this video as a way to learn how to play this game. I just want to give you some general ideas of how the game is played. So you're going to have a ship here. Each person's going to have their character. You're going to be the scientist, or the pilot, or the mechanic, or the scout, or the soldier. So you're going to pick one of these characters and take their miniature, and you'll be starting here. There's going to be random rooms that are put. These rooms have numbers, so they'll be placed in various spots. So for example, this is a storage room here. But then there's also little random event tokens that are going to be placed on them. So the whole thing is a little bit randomized how things are set up. Each player is going to get a set of action cards that match their character. So the soldier will have Demolition, Nerves of Steel, Covering Fire, and Search, while the scientist has Demolition, Intranet, Risk Assessment, Blocking Access, and Computer Skills. So you're going to have your own little deck of cards that you'll be taking. There's also a whole lot of other pieces on the board, but let's talk a little bit about winning. Now there's a few ways that the games can end. When the time gets here, to this spot, the time token, there's going to be a jump in the hyperspace. And you better be in hibernation in one of these uh, pods, or that's not very good for you. Also, the ship can self-destruct, and so hopefully you hasn't blown up by that point. So as the game goes by, the ship is going, you're going to try to get the ship back to Earth. The ship's going to be heading to coordinates A, B, C, or D, and there's going to be a coordinates card. So for example, here, Earth is at C. So that's the planet, that's its direction I want to go to. But this coordinates card, you, uh, you have to go there and check to see what that coordinate says, because you, you know we're going to B. Well, B is Venus. I don't want to go to Venus. I want to go to Earth. Uh, also, players want to make sure that the engines are working, because in these spots here, engines might be working, but they also might not be working, and there's going to be uh, different tokens there, and you're going to be able to switch those tokens in and out and make the engines work or not. At the beginning of the game, everyone's going to get two objective cards. One personal objective and one corporate objective. And so you are going to have to accomplish one of these objectives. So you'll look at an objective here. Maybe my personal objective is to send the signal and finish the game in escape pod or hibernation with the blue character corpse object. Um, so there's a, a blue character corpse will start in the main room. You have to get it there. Or finish the game in escape pod. And you must have at least seven items. Uh, here, the ship must reach Earth, or you have to be the only person to survive. Here, the ship needs to go to Mars for you to win. Um, so there's various personal things that can happen. But then there's corporates. Here, I might player four. Each person is going to be assigned a number. And so player four character cannot survive, or you're the only survivor. So some of these will have you go after a very specific person, um, or send a signal and finish the game in the escape pot or hibernation with an egg object. So you're going to be picking one of these to go to. Obviously, the corporate ones are meaner ones, and the personal ones are more like, hey, let's just all survive. Also, players are going to be checking to see if they're contaminated. 
as the game goes by, you're going to get these contamination cards. And, and you'll put them in here, and this one's okay. Because as I check this, you'll see, I don't see the word infected, although I'll see words that are close to infected. Um, but also, whoop, this one, see the word infected there? So I'm infected here, I'm contaminated. And if there's at least one infected card, uh, one contaminated card, you're going to die at the end of the game. So you don't want that to happen either. So there's a bunch of different things that you're going to be checking as the game goes at the end of the game. So it's not just a get to a spot and win. You're going to see where the ship goes. Are the engines working? Are players contaminated? Do they reach their objectives? As the game progresses, players are going to be taking b actions on their turn. And so when you look on your sheet, you'll see there's a list of basic actions that you can take. So there's movement, shoot, melee attack, pick up a heavy object, trade craft items all cost one action, and careful movement costs two action. But players are also going to be able to play cards. So maybe the, the captain will play basic repairs here and that cost two actions to do so. Or demolition, which is a free action. Or motivation, which gives other players an action card. In this game, you have like your own little deck of cards, cards you'll be using over the course of the game. Uh, contamination cards will clog that up as time goes by, but you're going to want to move around and discover rooms. So this room here, for example, is the command center. You'll notice that these rooms will basically ha are able to rotate because it will tell you how many items are possibly found in that room, and you're going to be searching for various items as this game goes by. There are different decks of items. And the items, obviously, you can see here, these green items are going to be health items. Uh, but maybe this deck here is weapon items. And you'll look for these items, decoys, energy charges, a prototype shotgun, an extended magazine. So going into different rooms and searching for items is probably something you're going to want to do. But as the game progresses, you're also going to, as time goes by, run into aliens. And these aliens are going to show up. And heaven help you if the big aliens show up. But things can get even worse when the gigantic ones come. And then, of course, eventually you're going to find the alien queen, who is not a very nice person, or so I've been told. So as you go throughout the ship, you're going to discover various rooms, like the canteen, where you can get the health things, the shower rooms, the generator, the surgery room. And each of these different rooms that you find throughout the ship are going to have various things, sometimes actions that are associated with them. Here's the airlock control, where you might be able to shoot an alien out into space. A laboratory, where you can analyze objects. The armory, where you can find a gun. Fire control systems, where you'll be able to do it. The problem is there's quarters all over this thing. And as you're moving in these quarters, you're going to be making noise, which means the aliens are going to be hunting you down. There's also these technical quarters, which you can't go into. And yet, aliens can pop out and come after you. There's a bag of tokens that you'll be drawing from, and depending on what you draw from this bag, and this bag will get worse and worse as the game comes by, means aliens might attack you, or aliens might try to bury themselves in your body and come bursting out of your chest. Um, you have an event card that you'll be drawing where fire might break out over the ship and you got to stop the fire. Um, or aliens are going to be coming after you or hatching or all kinds of nasty. I mean, these events are not good. You're going to be doing some basic combat against the different aliens. And when you do so, you will be shooting at them. And there's uh, dice that you'll be rolling for attacks. And some dice will do damage or not. And it depends on what, how big the alien is that you fight. A good way to kill the queen is to shoot her off into space space. You'll be opening and closing doors to keep the aliens from getting to you, but also to keep fire from spreading on the ship. You're going to need to go to the engines to get them working. You'll need to go up to the control room. There's an alien nest somewhere on here. And there's some intruder weaknesses here where sometimes you need to figure out what the weakness is. So you can, once you figure out what the weakness is of these aliens, they're not going to hurt you as much. So did all that seem kind of convoluted? Well, all that is a little convoluted, but the whole game itself, once you understand the flow, is not that complex. You're mostly just going to be moving around searching and doing events or going to a specific room and saying, okay, I'm going to go to the cabins. Well, that's a kind of a boring 
or I'll go to the evacuation center where I'm going to get into an escape pod. Of course, you're not going to want to go into an escape pod until you figure out how to beat the game. And, ooh, there's a nest. Maybe you need to get there to get an egg. Maybe that's your personal goal. So there's a lot of things going on, but thematically it all kind of flows together. And there's a video online if you want to see how the game exactly works. I just wanted to mention a few of the points as you go through it. There's a ton of stuff that comes with this game. The components for it are fantastic. Awaken Realms does a great job. This is a secondary side of the board where you can have a completely different board that you're going to go through. Now, obviously, the thing that people are going to talk about in this game is the miniatures, and rightly so. The miniatures for this game are phenomenal. This is the two biggest alien creatures, and they are just scary and they came kind of washed like this which is really neat i don't even need to, i don't feel the need to paint these at all they look really good and even the the space marines here they just have a really good look to them they're really cool uh looking models you have the color base so you can instantly tell them apart but these i mean the models here are just top notch and that's not the i mean everything about this game is top notch the the different card decks are easy to tell what they are. Everything's a different color. Um, I can go through here and look easily at what they do and how many actions things are. The tiles themselves give that kind of scary, derelict ship and there's aliens on board look to it. There's tokens all over the place. I'm sure this is a more, I'm not sure about how deluxified this version is, but I know that it's fantastic. There's also this here, which is Untold Stories, which is kind of a graphic novel where you're going to go through, and it's a comic book campaign where you can walk through the campaign. It tells you how to set things up, and then you'll see the storyline happen, and sometimes will give you choices and things that will happen to you. And so this is another way to play through the game itself. The rules, there's a rule summary card. All the stuff gets stored in a nice box here. Here you can see some of the aliens I didn't pull out. Uh, there are nice noise tokens and fire tokens that are going to come with the game. Overall, this is just a top-notch production. The only complaint I would have is these contamination cards. I found that you have to be really careful when sticking them in here so that you don't wear on the cards. This, I've never been a big fan of these red reading things anyway. And I do like that they wrote the infected. Like, There's no infected there, but at a first glance, you might see it. Um, but just sticking the card in here was not as simple as I thought. Uh, that's my only really complaint about production. The rest is just amazing. So let's start with the final thoughts, right? And I'll kind of work backwards from there. So my final thoughts are, I like Nemesis. I think Nemesis is cool. And I don't want to play it all the time. Now, that's, that doesn't seem like it necessarily works together. So let me explain. First of all, I'm still not a fan of semi-co-op, and if we play this game, I kind of hope you don't pick the objective that says kill player five, and I'm player five. That's just not as fun for me to do that. I mean, I think, and there's a couple reasons for that. One, I don't mind this whole traitor mechanism. I love Shadow of, uh, Mech, uh, Shadows over Camelot, Battlestar Galactica, you know, social deduction games, but those are shorter games than longer ones. I'm already stressed out of Nemesis from the aliens, like really stressed out from these aliens. Having another player then going after me, eh. But here's the thing. So far in the games I've played or watched, no one picks those. I guess someone could. Or you always have that in the back of your mind, like, well, I could kill player number five, uh, I guess. But people tend to pick the ones. And like I said, you can play a straight co-op game, which is what I would prefer to do. I get it. Thematically, it makes sense to have the one guy like, I oh, forget you all, I need to get an egg and get it, you know. That's what the co corporation wants me to do. I get all that. It's just that this game is also difficult. Now, it's not impossible. I've not beaten it, but I've seen people beat it, so I know that it's possible to win the game. Uh, but it is very punishing and difficult, which, as you've heard me in the past complain about, I'm not necessarily so upset with here because the theming makes sense if there's an alien queen. But I mean, it is hilarious. You know, the alien queen shows up, and here's my character. Ah, hello, mama. You know, to the point where she's like ripping you up, and ah! I mean, and it is possible for there to be a series of bad events. In one game, fire broke out in the ship. We're like, oh, we need to contain the fire. Next event, more fire, boom, ship burned up. And the, another one, I'm like, ooh, what's in this room? Alien queen's like, hello. Now, that's just bad luck in both situations. But that bad luck 
does exist. And that's one of my negatives about the game is sometimes, don't matter what you do, bad luck works out. But, good. I've already mentioned the amazing components. Fine, but components can't swing me from a bad game to a good game. But what does help is how deep and intricate the theme is. You want Aliens, the board game? You have it. I don't care who has the license, who sat around and decided to make it all. This is the game that has that license down, whether the license is technical or not. This is Aliens, the board game. And it's scary. I go into a room and be like, got to be quiet. Here comes the aliens. Oh, whew, it's a little face hugger. Wait, what? And... So there's a lot going on, and another negative is, even though the rules are not that complex, the rule book, I can get through the rule book, and the, 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 the cards and everything make sense thematically, it's still a lot. I'll be like, wait, what happens here? And in our first couple games, it was constantly like, oh wait, this phase, I need to draw a token and do this, and this is how combat works. To the point where I'm almost afraid to like, I, uh, when I was going over the rules, I'm like, oh boy, you know, I got to make sure I have the little rules right here because it's really easy to miss stuff. And so watch the video online, look, keep those sheets handy. As the game goes by, it makes sense because the theme kind of helps you make the right decisions, but there is a lot going on. This is not some mamby-pamby, just pull out the box and start playing type game because you will be overwhelmed by that. So I, I, I'll admit, my first reaction to this were not super positive because it was a steep warning curve, a steep difficulty curve, and that semi-co-op thing were there. None of those three things are things that make me super pumped and jazzed about a game. However, the component quality, the strong theme, the every game is going to play different, the sheer variety, and the fact that a pure co-op game exists in there, those brought me back around. So I like it. Again, I would be hesitant to play it very often because Soul-crushing defeat is not something I'm always in the mood to do. Although when you do win, I suppose the victory is that much sweeter. And, oddly enough, the Aliens theme is not one I'm a big fan of. I don't like the movie Aliens. I know, anathema and all. But I get why people do. And if you like that, this theme brings it to life. So, I don't think this game's going to appeal to everyone. I don't think it solved the problem of semi-co-op, and in fact, I think it has the same problems that every semi-co-op game has. However, there is a pure co-op mode, and it works. And you can even play the semi-co-op mode if everyone's playing for selfish reasons, but yet kind of trying to make the ship land at the same time. That works for me. Um, so you might be a hoarder and trying to collect stuff. It's very Dead of Winter-ish-y, and I don't mind that. That's, that part of the semi-co-op is good. What a game. It's a big game. A lot of people have gotten it, uh, backed it on Kickstarter, and a lot of people are going to be loving on it. I will admit I'm not, like, loving the game, right? This is not on my list of favorite games, but I have to give it a lot of respect. I do think it's fun. If you wrote me into a game, I would enjoy it, and I'm going to blow I'm gonna blow up the aliens as much as I can. I will never play a negative thing in this game. I just can't. I can't backstab you guys if we're on the same team when these aliens are here because they're just that mean and nasty. But your mileage may vary. Um, a lot of stuff in here, a lot of exploration. We'll see what I think about it in a year. My, I, 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 I foresee that my rating would only go up at this point because it is some cool stuff going on. But that's Nemesis. Dice Tower Judgment approved!